welcome aboard Amy Jo. Yeah. Since we last videoed or whatever. Flogged. We, <laughs> we have finished our cruise back down the Langothlan and we've spent a week at Halston Junction. Indeed, yes. We didn't film it on the way down, obviously, because no. you saw it all on the way up. On the way up, yeah. So there was no point filming it again. So that completed our summer cruise for last year. And uh, we're finally catching up with the vlogs now. And uh, on this particular episode, uh, we're going to cruise, <laughs> believe it or not, back up the Clangosman <laughs> from Hulston, through Hulston oh, yeah. Locks. And we're going to pull in at Swanley Marina because Amy Jo is going to have a serious oh. amount of work doing to her, as you'll see in the vlog. So yeah. we won't go on too much. We'll let you find out in the video. And see you at the end. In today's episode, it was just a short run from our mooring at Hurlston Junction up the Hurlston Locks to Swanley Marina. Well, today Smudge and I are on the move. Uh, we're carrying on up the Clan Gothland. Today we're going to go into Swanley Marina. Now, we weren't due to go in until the 1st of December, but there is a storm warning out for tonight and tomorrow. So we thought we would duck in. Excuse me, Smudgy's uh, moving about there. We thought we'd butt duck in and uh, shelter in the marina uh, for a couple of days. And as you can see, Morning Star and uh, Ian and Carol on board are following up behind. Uh, it's a beautiful morning, cloudless sky, but it is cold. And as you saw, I've even got Smudge in his winter coat today, and I've got my new wintry coat on as well. But it's an absolutely stunning cruise. And there's Smudge with his smart coat on. This is his winter coat. It keeps him nice and warm. It uh, protects him underneath as well. Those big flaps either side of his body is the coat going right underneath to his belly. So he's nice and toasty warm in that. It looks a lovely day, but believe me, it is freezing. Now, you might well be asking, well, where's Chris? Well, Chris has gone Christmas shopping, as Chris does at Christmas, Christmas, yeah. Um, she's gone to get some bits and pieces, and then she's going to collect the post from the house, because we've now got the car with us, and she's going to meet us at the marina. So while she's out and about, we thought we'd move. So uh, enjoy the cruise, folks. It's a lovely day. I haven't got the bow camera on today, so it's just me and the, and the phone and smudge. The low sun today is making things really difficult to see where we're going. Just coming up to a bend here and unfortunately it's going to put the sun right in my face. I can't even see, oh gosh, can't even see the display on the camera. So uh, cruising a bit blind here at the moment. in the home of Mountbatten, the coal boat, and it's Butty Jericho, which we just passed. And I understand that Richard's partner, Ruth, is suffering from a broken ankle. So I hope she gets well soon and recovers, and uh, she's taking it easy as she's supposed to. And hopefully we'll see her back out on the cut when her ankle is healed. But it's... Um, I do hope she's not in too much pain. So we're not far now from Swanley Marina, which is where we're going to be spending the next couple of months. Uh, as I said, we're having lots of work done on Amy Jo. 10th of December, she's coming out. We're going to have the bottom shot blasted and two packed. And the reason for that is we've had so many different blackings coated on the hull at the moment. We don't know what's good and what's bad. So it keeps flaking off. And when they shot blast it, big chunks of blacking are coming away. So clearly there's something wrong there. So we're going to take her back. Hello, dog. Right. As I was saying, <laughs> we're going to take her back to the bare steel and have two pack blacking put on. 
her gunnels are in a bit of a state so we're going to have those painted as well and we've all got some decks that need doing front and rear quite a bit of work and hopefully we'll uh, we'll vlog about that as it's done one of the jobs we're going to have done while amy joe's out of the water is to get some painting done hence why we're going in diy sheds and the first job which i'm tackling now is the well deck floor everything that you see there which is the dark blue was red rust as you can see there's still some uh, bits of red rust down here all this has to be ground off uh, back to bare metal and treated with rust cure like this patch that I've done here the area down through there was actually red rust so with the help of a grinder I've managed to grind that back but I've still got all that to do and the dust is horrendous despite having my big industrial vacuum cleaner here as you can see on the side wall of the locker there there's still a lot of dust around we had hoped to film the boat being shot blasted but unfortunately due to health and safety we were unable to be anywhere near the boat so she was in an isolated shed across the field but this is the end result this is amy joe with all her shot blasting complete so what you're seeing in gray on the hull is actually bare steel well, we just popped back down to the boat to have a look and uh, drop a few bits and pieces off and she has now been moved into the DIY shed so she's now in a nice dry area and Danny who's been doing the shop blasting and the blacking for us has actually given us the first coat of blacking and man what a difference she's looking absolutely gorgeous look at that now I've always mentioned in the past about the pitting and the roughness of the, the, the shell below the waterline, but just look at that. Shot blasting's taken all of that away. He's done an excellent job there for me. And here at the business end, it's looking equally as good. All had its first coat of blacking. And one of the jobs to do is that top bearing he's going to do that for me but in order to keep everything nice and warm we're going to be using this space heater it's a i think it's a 60 kilowatt heater so that should be more than enough to keep the, uh, the workshop warm this is the other side which i think danny's not long finished with so you can see the fans that's just to keep the air moving so that it doesn't uh, bloom up onto the paintwork with the uh, damp air, if there is any. But uh, I think she's going to be good. So, that's the first coat on. Even Smudgy's impressed. He's missed his home, I tell you. So, uh... so there we are. Can't wait to get my hands on an air and finish the paintwork. Having spent several days priming this side, unfortunately the tape where Danny put plastic all over the boat to protect it from the shot blasting has taken off a line of, of paint on the gunnel. As you can see, all these white spots are where it took the paint off. So I've now had to sand all that lot back down. It's ready for its uh, another coat of primer all the way down to the front. And uh, we've had to make good where Danny had put tape on the boat to um, cover her in plastic to stop the shop blast grip getting inside. And these new gray patches you can see along the side here is where I've had to sand it down uh, and it's where it pulled the paint off. So we've spent the day re-sanding and priming uh, the gunnels. Both sides are now done. And this weird looking contraption is because, because we're inside a nice dry shed. We don't want water pouring everywhere. And uh, we've had to rig up a temporary catchment system so that when we drain the sinks, it drains into these containers. So this one's a kitchen sink. And the hose you can see is actually the remains of an old uh, stretchy hose that was leaking badly. I've just cut it, 
stuck it to the top and uh, the one at the back here this one is for the bathroom sink but as you can see we're getting there slowly uh, walking down towards the uh, back of the boat obviously there's more grey here because this is where most of the scratches occur and uh, as you can see now I've masked up the tunnel bands there's one little spot there that needs a dash of primer and then these are ready for a finished coat in fact I'm going to do them tonight uh, and the roar that you can hear in the background is our only form of heating because we're inside a shed we can't use the log burner and we can't use the diesel heater although we can use uh, this space heater which the previous gen occupant of the shed has very kindly lent us and this is keeping the shed nice and comfortable at about 18 degrees, 19 degrees. And we have a little um, electric fire on board, which is just keeping the cabin warm. Busy, busy, busy. What? Someone saw it. Now we're on side two. And up front. Look at that, that's horrible. Up front, we've got we're working doing the new gas locker, so that'd be good when it's finished. A few sparks coming out, we've got our own like fireworks. Really. I'm quite short because Dan's quite busy, but. This is the other piece of work that's going on. We're having the um, gas locker widened to make it easier to get in and out. And old Danny there is well into the uh, welding, so I'm gonna stop and let him get on. Well, good progress made today. We've actually managed to paint the gunnels. This is the first coat gone on. And uh, it's gonna have a light rub down tomorrow. And the second coat, quite pleased with the result actually. It's uh, come out okay. Back, excuse the roar of the space heater, it's keeping us warm. Um, the back end of Obi Joe is now finished. The tunnel bands have had two coats of paint and we're just waiting for that to harden off and then the fenders can go back on. This side was the first side we did and uh, the Epithane's multi forte paint that we use dries as a satin finish. So uh, it's uh, already gone off touch dry so uh, that's this side today is day seven in the DIY shed and we've finished the starboard side gunnels that's all now complete so the starboard side of the boat is now finished and he's also completed the uh, work on enlarging the gas locker lid and it's had its first coat of primer so we're uh, just waiting on the lid itself, but it's going to make it so much easier getting the bottles in and out of that gas locker now. Well, the works is continuing on uh, Amy Joe, and uh, Danny's finished working his magic. He's now enlarged the gas locker lid as planned. It's one hell of a lid. It's bigger than we thought it was going to be, but access to the gas locker now is so much easier so this is access to the gas locker now plenty of room to get the bottles in and out and uh, while he's been working on it i've taken the opportunity to get a lick of paint in there and get rid of the rust can't see it that well without a light but there you go quite a productive day today the uh, gas locker surround has had its second coat of undercoat so it's had three primer two undercoats so far the gas locker lid we're trying something different we really don't have many more days left in the shed so what we've done is we've used a Jotun two-pack primer undercoat so basically you mix it with a hardener and paint it on and it goes on quite thick uh, and as you can see it's covered the paint work really well um, and I can go straight over that now with gloss so that saved me at least four days so uh, 
we're getting there slowly. The well deck now has had its second coat of um, undercoat. It'll need one more and then we can put the deck paint on that. And uh, so slowly but surely, she's coming together. Bit of repair work on the uh, side cheeks. I'm not gonna give them the full makeover. They're just gonna get touched up with a bit of gloss just to protect them. The, uh, this is the job for the summer, or end of summer, is to strip all that back and repaint it all. But before I do that, I need to get a template of these lovely boats that Alan Russell painted on there for me. I really don't want to lose these. I want these back on again when it's done. So any suggestions in the comments, please. I'm thinking of using tracing paper to trace them and then copying them out onto uh, an adhesive vinyl, cut the vinyl and stick it on and then paint round them or use the cutouts of them and paint them in. We'd be interested to know what you would um, do yourselves. So please put your thoughts on that in the comments below. Well, it's now 14 days since uh, Amy Jo came into the shed and the work is almost now complete. So basically, what have we been doing in those 14 days? Well, obviously, the most obvious work that's been done is she's been blacked and her gunnels are now been repainted and they're all looking quite nice. In addition to that, we've had to have two new anodes installed on the back. Rudder bearing that uh, was replaced at Norbury Junction at the beginning of the season, if you remember, has had to be replaced yet again because they didn't do the job properly and they didn't clean the rust off the rudder shaft and that wore the bearing out. So this is a brand new bearing. The rudder shaft has been uh, cleaned and greased this time and been fitted properly. So we've been repainting that. Now the stern deck, which was really starting to blister, has had a quick treatment with deck paint. It's not a brilliant job, but it has sealed uh, the rust that was on it. We've had I ground back, treated with rust cure, and the deck has been given a quick coat of um, deck paint with anti-slip. Still a lot of work needed doing up in the uh, crash area, but as you can see, the floor now has been done. Again, the rust has been ground back. It's been treated with rust cure, and it's had three coats of primer, three coats undercoat, and a coat of deck paint. Not sure whether we need to do another coat, but we'll see how that wears. Biggest translator, transformation of all is we've had the gas locker enlarged. Just look at the size of that. It's a massive uh, gas locker opening now, so it should be so much easier to get those two gas bottles out. And the lid is now that shape, so that makes access a lot easier. Like the well deck, this too has had three coats of primer, three coats of undercoat, and two coats of gloss. And you can just about make out the anti-slip that I've put on, just to give you a bit of grip when you stood on it. And of course, the Mooring Dolly T-Bar has had a coat of paint as well. That's been five years sitting in undercoat. I never did get round to repainting the gloss on that, so that's been done too. Said in the, like I said in the last video, there's still a few jobs left to do. As you can see, the bow cheeks desperately need some work doing to them, but that's a job for later. Well, that's it, we're all done. It's uh, all painted and finished. The fenders are back on. Launch date is tomorrow, nine o'clock. The last job to do today was to uh, gloss the hinges, put the gas below sign on, and that's it. Amy Joes are ready to go. Smudge's Christmas rabbit is sat there waiting, and so is Smudge.
Well, that's it. Amy's Joe is ready for launch. Gently, the launch trailer is pulled underneath Amy Joe to take her out the shed. Slowly but surely, the trailer creeps underneath. The guy on the tractor knows what he's doing. And finally, she's drawn out of the shed. And now it's a trip down the access road, through the barrier, mind the squirrel, and on to the launching ramp. Bit of tricky manoeuvring by the tractor driver to get Amy Jo facing the right way. The ramp is just off to the right, she'll get wet soon. So there you go. <laughs> there was an awful lot of work done on Amy Joe, to be fair, and I've got to praise Danny at Swanley. Yeah. He done a beautiful job with the shot blasting, as you saw, and the gas locker. So we're yeah. made up with that. So if you're watching, Danny, thank you very much, mate. We're very pleased with the work you did. I'm glad to be back out, though. Back yeah. out of yeah, out live, of the shed. <laughs> living in the shed was no fun, <laughs> believe me. So really, that's that's it. Now we're, we're Amy Joe's ready for her summer cruise this year. Um, but there's not going to be a vlog next week. We've got one more to do. Um, we're heading back yeah. to Tattenhall. So why is that then, Chris? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're going on holiday. Yeah. But it's a busman's holiday on a boat. <laughs> yeah, well. We're going up to Scotland. Scotland, yes. And no, before you say it,
we're not yeah. copying the foxes because we'd actually a... booked the holiday before they did yeah it was arranged um, at, the it was arranged at the same time so uh, but you'll be um we'll be vlogging up there while we're there but whether i get time to actually post any vlogs while we're away is another matter yeah. so uh, it depends on the internet doesn't it it really? does indeed yeah so you've got that to look forward to when we get back i'm really yeah. looking forward to it and then we start our big adventure going down south so uh, and of course we hope you're going to join us for that as well so uh, a fair bit of cruising this year so uh, we'll, we'll catch up with ourselves eventually we'll catch up with ourselves yeah so <laughs> i'm going to cut it short folks because i think we're almost up to about 30 minutes on the vlog there which yeah, is a bit long a bit long isn't it so do stay safe thank you for watching yes. keep those comments coming please because i do enjoy replying to them and the thumbs up of course you know you know the you, you know, know the, the spiel by now drill, foxes you? do it every week everyone else does it every, every week. week so but do take care stay safe and we'll see you next time on life on board amy joe bye, bye. bye.